Okay, we just completed the series on how to do a compression test. So now we found out our engine is low on compression, so we're going to do a cylinder leak down test. While you still have your compression tester hose in place, I like to bump the engine over until I feel the engine come up on the compression stroke. And that's gonna be when it starts to blow air out of my thumb. Once we've determined that, we no longer want to use the electric starter, and we do want to get ourselves a screwdriver, a wooden dowel, something to come down into the spark plug hole and rotate the crankshaft by hand. So I can reach the crankshaft on the back of this engine. And what we're trying to do is locate the very top dead center. Once we have top dead center located, we can screw the holes in for our cylinder leak down test. You really wanna make sure that that piston is all the way at the top of the cylinder. If that rod is cocked either way and we start applying air pressure to the top of this piston, that crankshaft will rotate. This is a very accurate test and it should be performed when the engine is warm. The reason you wanna do it warm, all your component pieces are expanded to their full sealing point and we'll get the most accurate reading we can. The problem is if you have an engine, single cylinder with no start, we've gotta do it cold. And really the only thing we're looking for when we're looking for low compression is where that air is leaking. So next, we'll grab our other hose for our cylinder leak down tester. You gotta make sure you have everything that fits accordingly. We'll install the hose into the engine. There's two different types of cylinder leak down tests out in the market today, single gauge and dual gauge. Kohler's preferred method is using a dual gauge because of their 999cc displacement engine. This is a dual gauge tester, okay? Single gauge, is just that. It is a single gauge tester. So they both work well, but they're both for specific purposes. A single gauge cylinder leak down tester can only do so much displacement size of an engine. If you're uncertain, dual gauge is the way to go. Anytime our piston and bore size is larger, we have to have a dual gauge to properly measure the amount of air leaking past the rings, piston, and cylinder wall into the engine. You'll have to have the appropriate air source for your gauge. Always start with the gauge backed off. As we apply pressure, you'll notice my numbers are virtually right on. They're the same. I'm gonna back this off. We attach our cylinder leak down tester to the engine. We slowly start to apply air pressure. I'm up to 20 pounds on the left side, about 18 pounds on the right side. Okay. You can take this up to 30, 40, 50 PSI is usually a pretty good range. Now I have 50 PSI on the left and I'm about 33 on the right. So I'm down 17 PSI from gauge on left to gauge on right. When we do the math, that's about a 34% leakage in this engine. Now we've got to determine where that leak is coming from. And that's as simple as putting your ear up to the exhaust system. Do you hear any air coming out of the exhaust? Removing your air filter listening to what's coming out from the intake side, whether we have an intake valve leaking, or pulling the dipstick. And you hear, you can actually hear air coming out from the dipstick on this engine. Now that's natural. That's gonna always happen. And the reason that happens is I've got a cold engine. I have an engine that the cylinder rings have not expanded from temperature. Now, as your rings expand, they tighten up because they try to push out in the cylinder walls and they can't. So what they do is as they're pushing out, we have that ring in gap inside of the engine and it tightens up. The reason we want a warm engine, you need that ring gap tighter. Now, I don't have this engine to the point of operating temperature. So my readings are naturally lower. 
When you go to the appropriate repair manual for the engine you're working on, they're going to tell you what is allowable. So I'm going to cut away now for a little bit. I want to take the air cleaner cover off. All right, so we're ready to go back to it. Another area I mentioned previously about listening to is going to be through the air cleaner inlet. I put my ear down on this one and I can actually hear air coming out. Now, a lot of people will just stop right there and say, oh man, I got a bad intake valve leaking. Don't forget your breather tube attaches to the clean air side of the air filter. And I'm getting air out through my breather tube naturally because I don't have my dipstick removed. The reason I want to keep the dipstick in place is so I can appropriately hear where that air is coming out of individually. But I do have to make sure I remove my hose from my breather system from the engine's breather outlet. Otherwise you'll get a false, yep, my intake valve is leaking and you'll go in the wrong direction. So really what a cylinder leak down test does is it determines why you are low on compression and why you have a poor running, poor starting engine. So this test done in conjunction with compression test, done in conjunction with a spark test, can be done in a very short amount of time. It really doesn't take that much time to do these three quick tests. Remember in the beginning video, the first video when I talked about compression, I said we need three things to make an engine run, air, fuel, and spark. Spark, easy test. Fuel, we cranked the engine over with the choke applied, pulled it out, we had wet. The air portion is we have to get air from the air cleaner through the carburetor into the engine and compress it. Just air naturally with some fuel doesn't give us the explosion on top of that piston to force that piston down to do work. So the big three, air, fuel, and spark, that's gonna be fuel, physically see it jump a gap, and a leak down test that allows us to build compression. So if you have any questions, please reach out to us at MeetArt at 1-800-888-7181 and ask for the MeetArt Engine Tech Department. Thanks. <music>